City of Presque Isle has always been a strong supporter of progress and innovation. Because of the faith in education and the long-term effects that it will have in society, it was just around the 1890s when Presque Isle residents began working towards an important goal, to establish a school in their town that will offer educational opportunities for the people of Northern Maine. Presque Isle was also a fairly new town, incorporated only 35 years earlier in 1859. It was the center of Aroostook County, with lumber business and all the several factories that supported the trade of the area, while with the coming of the Bangor and Aroostook Railroad in 1895, the community saw some of its most productive and successful years. It was just the work of several visionaries led by the vision of Reverend George M. Park, where they began working with the town and the state to make their dream of having a higher educational facility in town a reality. Their goal was finally reached in 1902, when the town of Presque Isle purchased the old St. John's Episcopal Secondary School for boys, which closed in the 1890s after the establishment of the first public schools in the area. At the same time, the town also purchased an additional five acres of land for $2,500, which then was donated to the state of Maine so that a normal school could be established. On Friday, March 20th, 1903, at exactly 12.40 p.m., the Maine State Legislature, under Governor John F. Hill, passed a bill that established a new normal school in Presque Isle. During the early 1900s, establishing normal schools was part of a national movement, and the Aroostook State Normal School was the seventh such school established in the state of Maine. A normal school was responsible for training and educating teachers, which was a profession much needed and important for the communities. My name is Lawrence Park. Lawrence is spelt with a U. I grew up in Presque Isle. We ended up in a house right across from Emerson Hall on Main Street in Presque Isle. To the left, the buildings is where my grandfather, where my father grew up, where he was born. And my grandfather, who was a Baptist preacher and also uh, on the Presque Isle School Board for 17 years, that's where he lived. So uh, uh, from 11 years on, I were a neighbor to the teacher's college. The Aroostook State Normal School, as it was known, was dedicated on August 18, 1903, and it opened its doors for the first class sessions on September 15, 1903. It had been 44 years after the town was incorporated that this new school is now finally operating. The first group of educators that ran the first days of school were Principal Irving Orison Bragg and two teachers, Mr. Alonzo Knowlton and Ms. Ardell Tozier, with 17 students, of which 16 were female and one male. The first programs were two year long and the tuition and fees were $11.50, while the institution had only two buildings, the central hall, which held the classrooms, and the principal's home and office. Since there were no dormitories established yet, all the students commuted to the school from their homes. On January 3, 1905, the institution opened the first training school. The training school was the equivalent of student teaching today, where local students in grades 1 through 6 attended the Central Hall classrooms in order to provide the Aroostook State Normal School students with the opportunity to get experience teaching children. In later years, the training school was moved to the Presque Isle High School. There was a big demand for teachers. They pushed for their school, and they were looking at this place right here. And I think uh, I, I just read something, somebody donated or sold them five acres. And uh, they, they talked to the be a bishop of the Episcopal Diocese, and it got built. In 1905, Governor William S. Cobb signed a bill appropriating $20,000 for the construction of a dormitory for the institution. The community of Presque Isle showing for once more their strong support for their educational institution. Town officials gave the equivalent amount of $20,000 as an additional funding to build the new dormitory for the normal school. That first dormitory included dorm rooms, a dining hall, and a small gym. The matron of the dorm was Miss Mary E. Kelly and her assistant, Miss Tracy. They both came to the institution on December 4, 1905, in order to get the dormitory ready for 24 students to move in. 
11 years old, living across the street. The freshman class, they had kind of a get the kids to learn the area. So they had a scavenger hunt for the freshmen to do. On the list, they had a cat. <laughs> we had a white cat. The kids come over, can we borrow your cat? Normal Hall is the oldest building that remains on campus today. It was built out of a need for dormitory space and remained a residence hall for women until it was converted to offices to serve the needs of faculty in 1971. What is now the faculty lounge was once the dining commons for residents who lived here in Normal Hall. During the summer of 1996, the first floor of Normal Hall was renovated, making the first floor consist of classrooms in addition to the lounge and kitchen areas. In 1907, Principal Bragg retired and in its place took Mr. San Lorenzo Merriman, who served the institution for 33 years. Under Principal Merriman, two buildings were added and 10 additional acres were purchased. While in 1934, the two-year plan was developed into a three-year plan. Over the next 23 years, Principal Merriman served as an excellent role model to faculty, staff, and students as he encouraged the start of, and he participated in, many school activities and functions. He was very respected by everyone and brought a great deal of enthusiasm and commitment to the institution. Some of the changes that he initiated on campus were the summer session and the construction of the administration building, Preble Hall, in 1921. In 1919, Governor Carl E. Milliken stated that the Aroostook State Normal School could have a new building if it could guarantee a large growth in student enrollment during the next five years. The state government appropriated funds towards the construction of a new building that was completed in 1921, and it was called the Administration Building. The building was later renamed Preble Hall in honor of Mr. Sanford Preble, a sub-principal in 1922. Sadly, the original building of the Rustic State Normal School burned down during Merriman's time as principal. However, one year later in 1924, a new building, South Hall, was erected where the old one had stood. In the year 1909, the first school newspaper that was later developed into a school yearbook, the Salma Gundy, was created. In 1921, Principal Merriman built an off-campus home for himself and he converted the principal's home into 16 dormitory rooms for women. The building came to be South Hall, since it was the southernmost building on campus. In 1923, must have been in May, because they had the pole up with the ribbons around it, the maypole, and all the girls with their long white dresses on were unwinding the, the ribbons. You look in the background at South Hall and the staging was up clear to the top on the outside from the contractors working on that building. And that uh, started to be used in 1925. In 1940, Principal Merriman retired and the school welcomed its third leader, Dr. Clifford O.T. Wadeen. Wadeen became principal of the normal school and remained so for the three years before the institution closed down as a result of World War II. During the period that the institution was closed, Principal Wadeen, faculty, and students went to Washington State Normal School in Machias, Maine. In 1946, after the war was over, Wadeen came back to the Normal School to serve as principal. In 1953, when Aroostook State Normal School was upgraded to a four-year curriculum, the name of the school was changed to Aroostook State Teachers College. Along with that change came a change in the title of Wadeen. His status was now as president rather than as principal. Therefore, Wadeen became the last principal and the first president of this school. During the war, due to the lack of enough space for housing in the, in the Prescott military base, the military built two barracks behind what is now Preble Hall. These barracks were used for a while, and later they were torn down, and in their place were built Folsom and Pooley Halls. On September 23, 1946, the Aroostook State Normal School reopened its doors with Principal Wadeen, four faculty, and three staff members, and welcomed 52 students. That same year, Miss Caroline Gentile was hired to teach health and physical education. She would become the university's longest serving faculty member. Over the time period from 1947 to 1969, when President Wadeen retired, there are many important changes to the school that helped mold it to what it is today. Some of the changes included the institution's change to a junior college and the change of its name. 1954, the Aroostook State Teachers College became a member of the Northeast College Conference for Intercollegiate Sports. 
Also in 1954, the Aroostook State Teachers College became the first site of a state-sponsored school for practical nursing. In 1958, the health and physical education and recreational programs were also established. In 1960, a new building was completed. The purpose of this building was to house an auditorium, a gymnasium, and several classrooms. As a result of President Within's commitment to and influence to the college, the building Within Hall was named in his honor. In 1962, the Ben Marks Farm was purchased by Aroostook State Teachers College for $60,000. The addition of this land added 123 acres to the present 27 acres, making the total campus size 150 acres. This was a welcome addition, especially considering the growing need for dormitories. In 1963, some of that need was fulfilled when Emerson Hall was completed. This dormitory was initially built as a women's dormitory. Due to this reason, it was named after Ms. Leah Crabtree Emerson, the first female member to the State Board of Education. The year 1964 marked an important change for student financial aid, as this year marked the beginning of the work-study program. In addition, the Equal Opportunity Grants were first awarded in the same year. Another name change occurred in 1965, when Aroostook State Teachers College was renamed Aroostook State College. This change was needed as a result of the growing curriculum which focused on other areas of study other than teaching. Two more buildings were added to the campus in 1967, when Merriman Hall and Kelly Commons were constructed. Merriman Hall was built as a residence hall and remains so today. Kelly Commons was built to fulfill the need for a cafeteria, and this building was named after Miss Mary E. Kelly. During President Wedeen's time as head of this institution of higher learning, many changes were made to the campus. The campus grew from 27 to 150 acres, and from 3 to 10 buildings. In addition, the enrollment grew from 140 to 600 students. The Aroostook State College became a part of the University of Maine system in 1968. It was then renamed the Aroostook State College of the University of Maine. In 1968, the much needed classroom building was built and was named after Miss Ida Folsom, a longtime science teacher at the school. This is Folsom Hall. Also in 1968, the Aroostook State College of the University of Maine joined the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics and the National Collegiate Athletic Association. In 1969, by popular vote, the students adopted the owl as the school mascot. While the same year of 1969, Park and Pollen Halls were finished and dedicated. Park Hall, a dormitory, was built where Reverend George M. Park's home once stood. The building was named in his honor because of his efforts in making Presque Isle the site of the normal school. Pollen Hall was named in honor of Miss Marguerite Pollen, a longtime teacher. The same year, in 1969, when Clifford O. T. Wedeen retired as the president, Dr. Stanley F. Solwalk took his position and served as the fourth leader of the institution for 11 years. When Dr. Solwalk was in his tenure career, the university experienced an expansion of programs, buildings, and athletics, and an overall function of the University of Presque Isle. In 1970, the Norton Museum was donated and moved to the university, while one of the greatest changes in its history also occurred that same year, when the institution received its final name change, thus becoming the University of Maine of Presque Isle and a part of the University of Maine system. In 1973, the university saw a huge change in its curriculum with the addition of the Bachelor of Arts degrees, as well as the subjects of criminal justice and Soviet studies. 1973 was also the year that the WUPI radio station was built. In 1974, the Smith House was purchased, and in 1975, it marked the completion of the library, which was a needed addition for the campus. When the library was completed, students, faculty, and staff moved the books and periodicals from Preble Hall to the new campus addition by hand. In 1981, and after Dr. Sawalk's retirement, Dr. Constance H. Carlson served as an interim president for one year before being hired as the official president. She was the fifth president of the university, but most importantly, she was the first woman president in the University of Maine system. In 1981, the student newspaper, the University Times, began its operations. And in 1982, the Special Collections Room was added to the basement of the library. When President Carlson retired in 1986, she was succeeded by Dr. James R. Roach, where he extended the curriculum further and with the addition of three more buildings. President Roach wanted the President's House to be located on campus. 
Thus, in 1987, the Smith House transformed into the President's House. President Roach advocated for the addition of a new building. This new facility is the Campus Center. The work done in this building was completed in 1992, the same year that President Roach retired from Lumpy. In 1993, Dr. Michael W. Easton became the seventh president of the university. While a few years later in 1996, the university became the home of the Northern Main Museum of Science, located right here in the third floor of Folsom. In 1999, Dr. Nancy H. Hensel became the eighth president. During her tenure, she established the Holton Higher Education Center, while she also worked to secure funding for the creation of Gentile Hall. The construction began in 2004, and on January 21, 2006, it opened its doors to students and Presque Isle residents. In July of 2005, Dr. Carl E. Berger became the ninth president. In September 2006, Dr. Donald N. Zillman was appointed as the 10th president of the university. The university welcomed its 11th president, Dr. Linda K. Schott, in July of 2012. President Schott provided transformational leadership at the University of Maine at Presque Isle. In 2016, the 12th president of the university came to be a long-term faculty of AMPI, Raymond Rice. Well, I'm Raymond Rice. I'm the president of the University of Maine at Presque Isle, uh, and I'm also an English faculty member. I've been an English faculty member since 1997. I, I was nervous as a first-year English professor uh, because I knew that in a small way, I was part of the future of those students that I was teaching for the first time, and so I didn't want to mess that up. Um, I certainly feel the same thing as president some 21 years, 20 years later. Um, but you always feel that sense of responsibility that um, whether you're a first year, I think, instructor or whether you're a department chair, or whether you're a staff member here, um, that you have the sense of responsibility to the people that you serve and that the decisions you make impact um, not just the future of your own life and your own family, right, and your own professional history, but of all of those that, that you serve as part of that institution.